Radian and degree measurements determine exact value. Sine 5 pi by 3 minus cos 7 pi by 4 minus cot 11 pi by 6. Now all kinds of triangles are here with us. So it's good to draw our standard special triangles. Now one of them is the one which has got 60 and 30 degrees. Here it is. And we can write down this as 60. Now because we are doing pi, we'll do pi by 3 here and pi by 6 for 30 degrees. Correct? And the sides are 1, 2 and square root 3. The other one is pi by 4 or 45 degrees. Correct? So that one is here. We have this here which is 1, 1 and square root 2. And the angle here is pi by 4. Correct? So we have our special triangle. So these are a few things which we need. Second thing which we need is a coordinate plane to figure out where these angles are and what their sign will be. Remember cost rule. The cost rule is here we have cos C A S T right. So the cost rule and coordinates you should remember 1, 2, 3 and 4. They start from here okay. Now so these are four quadrants we know now sine 5 pi by 3 sine 5 pi by 3 where will this angle be now pi by 3 is when you divide this pi into three equal parts so we get three parts here correct okay? so like this one i mean this is very small anyway one here two and three and fourth and fifth fourth will be kind of fourth and this one is fifth for us. So 5 pi by 3 is kind of here, right? So this angle from here to here is 5 pi by 3. Now, so the related acute angle for us is pi by 3. You see that? Therefore, I can write sine 5 pi by 3. Let me start from here. I can write sine 5 pi by 3 as sine pi by 3 with a negative sign because it lands into quadrant 4. So I'll write this as minus sine pi by 3 since related acute angle is pi by 3. So the idea here is to write in terms of related acute angle alpha. Okay, So we are just saying checking this out. We say well alpha is this much right and since sine is in sine 5 pi by 3 is in quadrant 4 it will be with negative sign so negative sign let's look into cos 7 pi by 4 so cos 7 pi by 4 that means I'm going to divide it into halves so pi by 4 I get 4 units here and 4 there so 8 in all 7th is 1 less 1 less than pi by 4 so that is my 7 pi by 4 right so acute angle here is pi by 4 because 7 is there, 8th one will give me the angle with the horizontal, right? Since cos is positive here, we will treat it as positive. But it's already negative this place, so that negative sign remains and we get cos of pi by 4, correct? Now let's look into the third one, cotangent, 11 pi by 6, 11 pi by 6. To get 11 pi by 6, we have to divide our pi into 6 equal parts, 6 here and 6 there. So there are total 12 parts. So we land with 11th which is 1 less than 12. So it's kind of here, right? So related acute angle is again pi by 6, quadrant is 4, cotangent has to be negative since it is positive only in all that is 1 and 3. So this gives us negative of that which will make this as positive. We have positive cotangent, well right cot, and the acute angle which I got this time was pi by 6. So that is how my equation has been transformed with from those angles, principal angles, to related acute angles. Correct? Now I can use my special triangles to write down their values and calculate the answer. 
minus sine pi by 3. Pi by 3 is here, sine is square root 3 over 2. So I'll write here minus square root 3 over 2 minus cos of pi by 4. Pi by 4 is adjacent over hypotenuse which is 1 over square root 2 plus cotangent pi by 6. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, cotangent will be reverse. That means square root 3 over 1. So I'll write plus square root 3 over 1. Okay, that's fine. To add these, my common denominator is 2 square root 2. Correct? So I'll write here as 2 square root 2. Now, to make it 2 square root 2, I need to multiply this by square root 2. So I get minus square root 6. And here I need to multiply by 2. So I get minus 2. And here I need to multiply by 2 square root 2. So this becomes plus 2 times square root 6. This is what I get. Now 2 times square root 6 minus square root 6 gives me 1 square root 6. So I can simplify it a bit. So we get square root 6 minus 2 divided by 2 square root 2. Correct? So that is kind of my answer. Now many times we don't need square root 2 in the denominator. So in that case we may like to change it. So, so rationalize it, right? So that may or may not be required, but let me rationalize and show you here. So to rationalize means this. That is, we have square root 6 minus 2 divided by 2 times square root 2. So we'll multiply and divide by square root 2, which will give us square root of 12 minus 2 square root 2 divided by, this becomes 2, 2 times 2 is 4, as 4. So it could be written like this, 12 can be written as 4 times 3, where 2 comes out. So 2 square root 3 minus 2 square root 2 over 4. This can be simplified, and so I can write this as 2, 2 will cancel, right? So half remains. So you get half of square root 3 minus square root. So that is my final answer, correct? So that is how you can get exact value of the given expression. Thank you.